Good morning. We will get started very shortly. Welcome. So while we're just waiting for the next few moments, the planning when people arrive, uh, you may find your seat, um, be comfortable where you are. Um, you may like to have a chair nearby, a straight chair that you use at some point in practice. It's not necessary, but it might be helpful. Good morning. Namaste. So this morning I um, was reflecting on what it was that I wanted to share with you all. And what came to me is that really it's been a, a turbulent time and um, for me I get wrapped into the, the overload of information and um, yeah, I, I tend to be really sensitive to the energies around so I feel like the collective energies are really triggering me to uh, go into that place of you know destabilization and fear and worry and all of the things that go along with this situation that we're living in and we're living through. And so I call this class Connecting to the Vastness Within, the Vastness That You Are. So how is it that we can navigate these times when the energies are so high and the uh, emotions are so high in terms of the fear factor and not identify with that small aspect of who we are and keep in mind that we are that vastness. So one of the things that comes to mind is sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that we are within consciousness, no, sorry, that consciousness is within us, and really it's the other way around, and that is that we are within consciousness. Consciousness holds us, like this vast field of awareness. So when we shift that perspective, we can see that this consciousness holds everything including our fear, including our sense of worry and unknown about the future and all of that that gives rise to. So we're going to use a practice this morning to connect us back into that awareness, that truth, that we are that vastness. So I invite you to make yourself comfortable, like those of you who are just arriving, you may want to have a straight back chair nearby. If you have yoga blocks, they'll be useful, but we can do without as well. You can use blankets or cushions or whatever you may have at home. So let us close our eyes, finding a stable seat. And just beginning by taking a deeper inhale breath. And letting it out with a sigh. Ah. And 
let's do that a few more times. Just breathing in all that is here right now. And letting it go, surrendering it. Let's do one more. Let your eyes close and begin by just noticing how the weight of your body feels on the floor. Begin to listen to the breath as it enters your body. Notice where it enters your body. For me, it always seems to enter near my navel center. So I naturally go there as I breathe in and I draw the breath up towards my heart and then I allow it to flow back down towards my navel or my perineum or whatever you feel connected to from below at the earth level. So from earth, drawing the breath in and up, and breathing it out. So we are using our breath to create a stable stabilizing force and a grounding force. So I'd like you to now just continue to follow the natural rhythm of your breath and begin to deepen the breath, even if it's by one count. So we're going to aim for breathing in for six, holding for two, breathing out for six, and holding for two at the bottom. So inhaling for six. Hold and release the breath. So just let us all find our own natural rhythm. For some of you it may be four that you can count to and hold for one. Let your mind be anchored on the movement of the breath as it flows up and down. So as we work with our breath and visualizing how it moves, we're moving in the physical form, in the physical bone and muscle and organ body, but we're also moving our energy into our subtle body, where the chakras reside. So as you breathe in, you can visualize your breath moving from Muladhara to Shvadhisthana to Manipura to Anahata, the heart to Vishuddha at the throat. And you could even go all the way up to Ajna at the third eye, and perhaps even the crown. But in any case, we're moving, and with that awareness of the subtle body, we're cultivating that subtle awareness. So we're moving deeper and more inward. complete three more cycles of breath, allowing the breath to be a little longer, a little deeper, a little fuller.
going to join a mantra to the breath and continue to follow the movement of breath up and down. We're going to use the mantra Hum Sa Sol Hum. So we're familiar with the Sol Hum. Hum Sa is just a reversal of that. What does that mean? Soul hum. I am that. That I am. Hamsa. Yes? What is that? So this mantra is calling us to access our higher self, the highest level of our awareness, our deep connection to spirit. So if I am spirit, I am one with everything that is. I am that vastness. I am that blue sky, that open, expansive space that can hold everything. Okay, so we're going to use that mantra to create that force of stabilization within vehicle within our physical body and within our mind and our emotions. So as we inhale, we're going to imagine hearing, it's not a vocal sound, it's inner sound. Imagine hearing reverberating inside your head, inside your whole body, the sound hum as you go up and as you go down, as you exhale, sa all the way down. At the bottom of the breath out, we're going to lift perineum a little bit, just for a few seconds, just enough to create that little uplift through the center of the body, just a gentle one, and then release, and then inhale, so, pause for two, and hum. Exhale all the way out, and again, you're following your own rhythm, whether that's four count or six count. Hold at the bottom with perineum lifted. So let's continue. Inhale, hum. Exhale, sigh. Lift perineum. Release perineum, inhale, so pause, exhale, hum, back to the perineum, lift a little, squeeze, release, let's keep going. So I'm just going to be quiet now and let you work with the mantra, the sensation, of the breath streaming up and down the Shushumna. Feel the exterior body relaxing, the face relaxing as you focus on the central channel and the breath.
notice how high you feel the energy moving up as you go into the upward inhale breath, hum, and exhale, sa. towards the throat, the third eye, and hum all the way down, pull up, release, inhale, hum, Exhale, hum, all the way back down, and pull up on perineum, relax, let's do three more cycles in silence. Last cycle. and relax. Let your palms turn up now on your thighs. And just notice the energy quality in your awareness. So there's two images that I like to use. Sometimes one is more relevant than the other. So if I am the vastness of an open blue sky, anything that arises within that blue sky, however dark the uh, thundercloud may be, it's contained within the vastness of that expanse blue sky. So I can hold it. I can say that whatever arises within my awareness, I can hold it. I am big enough. I am all there is. So I do not need to identify with the little thundercloud, however dark it is because I know that that's not who I am. The other image is of an ocean. So I 
am not the wave at the surface of the ocean. I am that calm, deep stillness down near the bottom of the ocean. So whatever wave arises, I can welcome it knowing that I am not that. Allow your left palm to come to your heart, just gently placing the palm there and then cover that left palm with the right palm. And feel yourself anchored in that space where you can connect to the basis. Taking a couple of deep breaths into this heart space and feeling yourself anchored here. Feel the chest rise to meet the touch of your hands. your palms down. Another way we could think about what we're doing these days is we're transmuting fear into love through 100% acceptance of what arises. No resistance because resistance we know is futile. And resistance just brings gives that, whatever energy we're trying to press down, it gives it more power in our life. All right, so we're going to um, move into um, the physical body moving and removing whatever is held in our bodies this morning. My intention this morning, so that you know about time, is that I will be done by 11.30. So we will work towards a, a seated and then a standing, and then um, have a, 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 a longer Shavasana so that we can integrate properly. So I'll, I'll um, get us to uh, end at about 10.20. Uh, sorry, 11.20, and then we'll have a 10-minute Shavasana and be completed by 11.30. So let's begin by inhaling and just create a lift <coughs> through the front body and open and lift the sternum and lift the chin up. And then exhale, just allow the chin to drop down. using ujjayi, pranayama, ujjayi breath, if that's within your comfort zone, within your practice, if it feels comfortable for you. Inhale up and exhale, just release the weight of the head down. Let's do one more. So feel the whole front body lifting. And release. Just allowing the chin to drop down this time and stay down. Begin to feel the breath coming up into the back of the neck. And let it wash up your spine from the tailbone, lifting it up through the backbone, moving it up into the space between the shoulder blades and all the way up to the base of the skull to feel that that space of connection there between the neck and the cranium. We're going to move our chin. I invite you here to explore in your own body, moving chin from side to side. And letting yourself be slow enough that you can feel the breath expanding 
into the spaces that are held, the tension. Oh, welcoming out breaths that allow you to release what is held in the body. This is completely intuitive and it's an exploration. There's no right, no wrong. You can go at your own pace. Ah, while you're doing this movement with your chin from side to side, allow your shoulders to start to sit down onto your back ribs. Letting the shoulders release heavily away from the ears. Filling the column of the neck with prana, which rides on the back of the breath. Let's come back through the center now. And let your hands come in front of you and begin to roll forward, just releasing your head and then your shoulders and then your mid back and then coming from the very low back, moving all the way down. And while we're down here, we'll take a few breaths. Just feeling like you're drawing the energy of the breath up the backbone and washing out any stagnation. Rinsing out your spine, rinsing out and cleaning out all of the nerves along the spine. Hmm. So working with the physical body as well as the subtle body. Ah, after the next out breath, take your hands onto your thighs with fingers pointing in towards the center and extend forward with your chin, looking towards the front of your mat, looking into the center of the room, and then press down onto your thighs and lift your spine all the way back up, opening and lifting through the sternum. And as you exhale, let the chin come down to chest, roll forward once again. Take your time, breathe into the spaces of, of holding the little knotted areas. You can sway your body from side to side to coax those stubborn little areas open in your body. Ah, as you make your way all the way down into a little ball, Take a couple of breaths when you're down here. Ah, clearing out, releasing out, feeling yourself really open to this letting go. And letting the hands come back onto the thighs and release forward chin coming out in front of you. Press down onto the thighs and lift. Lift up through the spine. Look up towards the sky. Inhale up and feel the stretch all the way up into the throat and the third eye. And then exhale and release and just sit quietly for a moment. And I'm going to stretch out my legs. We've been sitting for a while, so you might want to give a little rub to your knees, your calves, get the energy moving back into the, into the legs. And I'm going to continue here with my legs extended out in front of me. I'm sitting on a cushion, but you could also be sitting on a block or a blanket, whatever you have handy. Just a little bit of an uplift. So here, letting the legs be comfortably wide apart, not the widest, but not medium, medium. And what we're going to do here is instead of rolling forward, we're going to move forward from the pelvis. So we're going to rock from the pelvis, leaning our spine forward between our legs, but we're not going to round yet. We're just going to keep our spine long. 
Think about the front and back of the spine moving equally at the same time. And, it, and here you're going to really feel the movement of the sit bones into the surface of your blanket or block. And continue to fold forward as long as you're able to stay with the spine straight. And here we'll take two breaths, letting the shoulders be relaxed but feeling like you're extending out through the crown of the head. Again, move the energy inside the body from perineum or tailbone up toward heart, throat, third eye, crown gate. Feel that energy moving through the breath and as you get to the end of your range just go ahead and release the head down and round your back ah, take a couple of deep breaths here sighing breaths releasing you could breathe through the mouth as you exhale if you wish but breathe in through the nose as you inhale And from here, come into a little ball. Draw your navel toward your spine and begin to stack your spine back up. Slowly and letting the head come up at the very end. Lift up through the chin, lift up through the sternum. Take another deep breath in. And then once again from here, hinging forward from the hips, Letting your spine lengthen in front of you in the space between your knees. Activate the muscles of your legs and thighs and feet and feel the action of rooting down through the back of the pelvis, the back of the legs. Keep extending out through the crown while the shoulders stay relaxed. Making the spine nice and long, creating traction along the spine here. Space for energy to flow up. And as you get to the end of the range with the flat back, release the head and roll down into the little ball shape. Ah, let go. Let go even more here. Uh, so here, while I'm in this downward position, I'm going to take advantage of this place to open the side body. So I invite you now to take the right ribs toward the right thigh and just have your right elbow on the inside of the right thigh and lift your left chest back so that if you were to look at your shoulders the left shoulder is stacked on top of the right and then just lift up through the left arm here root down through the back of the legs and breathe here ah, i'm lengthening and lengthening the side body the right side of my body is moving over, draping over my right thigh. My left arm is reaching up to the sky, strongly feeling the connection through the left sit bone, breathing up into the left shoulder, and here I'm going to go over towards my right foot with my left hand. Ah. I'm still really aware of the pressure that I want to exert through my lower body, my grounding surface, and then the energy that's lifting up through my spine and out through the crown of my head and out through my hands. One more breath. When you're ready to come out, root down through the legs and lift your left arm up and let it take you out of your side bend and come back and release 
Just let your palms turn up, close your eyes or lower your gaze and feel what's happening in your energy body. Can you feel the lift of the energy towards the heart? Ah, beautiful energy up, cleansing and clearing our vehicle. And we're going to go into the other side now. So we were, first of all, hinging forward from the hips. So we're already in that forward movement. Then we're going to lean towards the left elbow. Left elbow on the inside of the thigh could be closer to the groin or closer to the knee. And then with the right chest, we're going to lean back, stacking right shoulder over left, and starting to lengthen and reach up with the right arm. And notice that my spine is one strong, straight line from, from tailbone to crown. I'm grounding down through the back of my legs. And at this moment, I'm just opening the right side of my body, strongly rooting through the right sit bone while lifting up through the right fingers. Breathe here. Notice how the energy is called into the places that are held. In some ways, it's like these places are held as if they were underground in a dark space, unconscious space. Maybe we could say that this, these are the spaces of fear in our body and we're bringing the light in. Bringing the light and flushing out all the stagnation and that darkness. Let your right arm come towards your right ear now. I mean, towards the left foot. Ah, reaching strongly with both arms. Feel the two sides of your torso lengthening over your left thigh while rooting down through the legs and through the heels. Ah. And then begin to come up with the right arm. Let it take you out of your forward side bend and release the arm and come back again go inward and feel ah, let the heart open even more so that it can hold more ah, beautiful let's bring the hands to the heart Interlace the fingers here, press the palms out in front of you, and just as you press strongly through the hands, feel the space across your upper back opening. Put your attention there. Just work on opening that space between the shoulder blades. Can you feel? that each breath is opening the area and allowing you to be conscious of what's held there so that you may choose to let it go. Slowly as you inhale, let your arms come up over your head, root down through the back of your legs. Let your shoulders relax by bending your elbows. Maybe you can turn your head from side to side here, working through the sides of the neck, connecting to breath. And here, returning the chin to center and see if you could start straightening your arms without lifting your shoulders. Breathe into the strong sensations that you feel in your shoulders, your chest, your armpits, your upper arms. So the lower half of the body from the waist down is pressing into the earth and from the waist up everything is lifting. Let's take three more breaths here. Breathing out through slightly pursed lips, breathing in through the nose.
Breathe out and empty, empty out all of the air. From here, release the arms, let them float slowly down. Let your arms be out at shoulder height here and press out through the heels of the hands. And then point down with the fingers. And as you exhale, lift up with the fingers. Do that three more times, just feeling the glide of fascia underneath the forearm and on the upper arm. Nice. Circle your wrists. Keep the breath flowing. Keep the chest lifted. Relax the shoulders. Circle the wrists in the other direction. Ah, and then let your hands ground towards the earth, just on either side of your body. Relax your shoulders. Are you able to feel how we are literally waking up that deep center core channel of in our bodies? This is bringing us into a meditative space, a meditative state. And when we are in that state, in that space, we can be a better witness. It's easier for us to not get roped into whatever is going on out there. So this is our training ground. Our practice is our training ground for um, what we need to meet in our, in our daily experience. We're going to move from uh, seated and invite you now to go onto your back. And if you have a block, and I'm thinking about the thicker block, like this kind of block, the three inch or um, block. You may have it with you, just beside you. So go ahead and use your core here to lower yourself down if, if you feel strong this morning. You could also use your hands onto the floor and lower yourself. But I like to go this way into a reverse um, reverse of a um, sit up and then I lower myself down and lower my head to the floor and just draw your heels in a little closer to your buttocks so the heels are in line with the sit bones let your arms be resting alongside your body actually we're going to go into a little lift of the pelvis. So when we rock our pelvis forward, we create a little bit of a tunnel behind the waist. So we'll do that on an in-breath. So the pelvis rocks forward on the in-breath. And then as we exhale, we draw the navel toward the back of the body and we let the small of the back flatten on the floor. So let's do this three, four times. Just Noticing how that is. Movement of the pelvis gives rise to movement like a wave all the way up the spine. So breathe up the front of the body as you roll forward and breathe down the back of the body from the neck down to the tailbone as you flatten, as you exhale. Inhale up to Shumna, exhale down to Feel the feet on the ground. Feel all of your ten toes pressing down. Feel the four corners of your feet. Let's do one more. Just become aware of that contact of feet to floor. And ending with this next one, 
Let the arms be by your sides, palms face down. Have your heels directly underneath your knees. Inhale, and as you exhale, start to press through the feet and lift your pelvis up. So here is where we would place the block between the thighs if we had one. So I'm le the length of my block is between my inner thighs and I'm squeezing the block as I lift my pelvis up. So as I do this, I'm drawing my sternum towards my chin and I'm really feeling the strength of my thighs as I gather the thighs in. So if you do not have a block, you're still imagining that you're drawing and squeezing the knees in towards each other, even though they're not touching, you're, they're staying over your toes, uh, hip distance apart, you're still gathering the energy. Now hold here and squeeze perineum and squeeze the buttocks and breathe up from the navel towards the heart. At the same time here, use your arms. Maybe 10% of strength in your arms, press back and down towards the earth with your shoulders and upper arms and elbows. Let's hold for three more breaths, continue to squeeze. Building the energy, building the heat, building that Agni, the fire. And slowly, now relax the arms, maybe move the arms away from the body a little bit and slowly come down. Very taking your time to lower each vertebra back and then the sacrum. And then just rest and feel the energy coming up into your heart, into your throat. Maybe you can feel some heat inside your head. We're going to do this one more time. So let us come back. You've got your block. This time start with the shoulders, pressing down with the shoulders, feel your feet, hip distance apart, squeeze your knees together or towards each other if you do not have the block, and then begin to lift the pelvis slowly. The weight gathers up into the upper back and the shoulders, but the neck stays undisturbed. Notice that your chin stays slightly lifted away from your sternum and then you begin to really squeeze with the thighs and do that little lift in the perineum and squeeze the buttocks as well and then let the energy flow up from the belly towards the heart, navel to heart as you inhale heart to navel as you exhale. Two more breaths, navel to heart, heart to navel. One more breath, squeeze. And out, slowly let these shoulders relax. Lower vertebra by vertebra as if you were lowering a pearl on a string, one pearl at a time. And lower all the way down. And then if you were using a block, you could remove the block here. Let's bring the knees into the chest, just giving ourselves a little, a little complimentary pose, rocking side to side. So here I want you to get your whole shoulder and hip off the floor and then do the other side. So you're rocking and finding the widest part of your back 
at the same time you're relaxing your belly. You're letting the whole content of your belly be like a beautiful watery bowl. Now as the knees go to the right, let your chin turn to the left and look over your left shoulder. Inhale back to the center and as your knees go to the left, turn your head towards the right. Just feel the rotation of the muscles around the spine all the way from the bottom of the spine towards the base of the skull as you do this. Finishing up here, taking another few moments and finishing up. We're going to place the feet on the floor. Ah. We'll go into one sided stretch here before we come to away from the mat. So I'd like you to lengthen your left leg. And take your left arm up over towards the ceiling and then lower it behind you. And just begin to extend down through the left foot. And when you do this, you could feel a space opening up inside your hip joint. And at the same time, as you're doing that movement, start to reach up with the left arm and extend through the left fingers. And breathe into that opening through the left side. Oh, one more breath here. Beautiful. And from there, we're going to go a little bit deeper into this movement. So we're going to take our left leg and slide it towards the front right corner of our mat. We might need to move our right leg out of the way to do this. And then reach above with your right hand to hold on to your left wrist and pull your left wrist gently to the right. And so your body now is in this beautiful crescent moon shape. As you reach out through the left heel, pull the left toes toward your face. And just feel the whole left side of your body expanding. This, by the way, is a side bending movement. release and come out just bring your leg and your arm back out stretch out your right leg and just notice the two sides of your body here ah, breathe in and out we'll change we'll bring the left foot to the floor let the left arm float back down by your side. And here, raise your right arm up over and behind your head. And begin to feel, first of all, reaching down through the right leg. So it's like your leg, your thigh bone are stretching down and you can feel this in your hip or on the around the side waist breathe a couple of breaths and notice how that is in your right hip and then stretch right arm stretch up with the right arm and down with the right foot pull your right toes towards your face to go even more into that the the longest of the uh, the tissue can ex expand or stretch out or lengthen. So in uh, Tensegrity, which is the other practice that I teach, and I will be offering more of those practices 
very shortly uh, online, we talk about lengthening into the, the fascial net, stretching it out as long as it will go, and then shrinking it back. So when we let go of that, we can feel the tissue, the, the fibers reach coming back, like springing back. So go in and out a few times, just exploring how that is to create the length and in the reaching part of the movement. And then when you let go, it's a beautiful coming back. And then the the, the fluids are moving through the tissue and the fascia is getting rehydrated by the variety of this lengthening and shortening. Okay, and then coming into the second part of this, we are going to walk the left, or sorry, the right leg towards the front left corner of the mat. Reach up to hold on to the right wrist with the left hand and pull the right wrist to the left a little bit and reach down through the right heel. And just feel the, the movement of that right side reaching and pulling on the arm. Connecting all parts along the way, feeling all of the sensations. Noticing where are you holding more? Focus there. Is it in the shoulder? Is it in the IT band? Is it in the lower calf? Ah, one more breath here. Crescent moon shape. And release and return your leg and your arm. Bend your knees. Here we're going to hug ourselves, so wrap your arms around your chest, left arm in front of right. And what we're going to do here is just simply pull the left shoulder blade away from the floor. Ah, feeling that rotation in the upper back and then release it down. Using the left hand, pull the right shoulder blade away from the floor. Ah, just try that a few times. Ah, creating a beautiful rotation in the thoracic part of the spine. And I like to look over my shoulder. As I lift it up, I turn my head to look over it. So do that in your own timing, to whatever degree is comfortable and manageable for your body this morning. Just enjoy. Oh, when you do this movement, you can feel the space between your shoulder blades starting to open up a little bit more, and you might even feel uh, a warmth into the space between the shoulder blades, which on an energetic level, you could say is the back door to the heart. So just return for a moment and sense into that sensation. Feel the breath flowing right into that space between the shoulder blades as you let your shoulders rest on the earth. While you're here, just pick up your right knee and bring it in towards your body. Lower it down. Pick up your left knee and bring it in towards your body. Just do that. Very slow. March. Breathing out and letting go of all effort through the shoulders, through the upper body. Just beautiful. 
The next time that you bring your left knee to your chest, just draw it in towards your chest even more and stretch out through the right leg. Take two deep belly breaths. Extend out through the right heel. Open your left knee out to the left. Ah, focus all of your attention around the inner left thigh and hip. Breathe as you reach down through the right heel. Relax the shoulders. Bring the knee back in, place the left foot down, stretch out your left leg, and draw your right knee to your chest. Draw it into a comfortable place and breathe into the belly. Ah, be aware of stretching through the left leg, lengthening out through the heel. Now place your right knee inside your right hand and open the right knee to the right. Feel that inner thigh, that inner hip opening with your breath there. Keep stretching down the length of your spine and out through the left foot. One more breath, just easing into our more physical practice. Now we're going to place the right foot down and from here let yourself roll over to the right side and use your left palm to press yourself up. Come and find yourself in a kneeling position. And if you need a blanket, you may need to um, bring a blanket under your standing knee. So we're going to come into a kneeling position. So as I said, if you if you want to take a moment here to Put a blanket under your standing knee to protect that knee, that's great. And we're going to take the left leg out. So make sure that your standing knee and your left foot are in the same plane. Okay. If you have a block you could use, place it right here. This could be useful to put your hand on in a moment. So this is a, 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 an asana, a posture called parigasana, the gate pose. So once you've got your heel there, I like to point my toes up because that gives me more movement in my hip, but some people prefer to have their toe pointing forward. So as you wish, as whatever feels more comfortable and whatever will allow you to go towards the left thigh more easily. So let's start with hands at the heart and feel the energy moving up from the knee, the standing knee towards the head. We're going to inhale the arms all the way up overhead. Stretch, stretch, stretch up. Maybe interlace the fingers with index pointing up. Let your arms come closer to your ears if that's available. And just experience that reaching through the arms, giving you more and more length and traction along your spine. Inhale, and as you exhale, let the arms float down to shoulder level, and stay here. Relax the shoulders down as you reach up through the crown of the head. Now inhale here, and as you exhale, begin to move your upper body, reaching out through the left arm, towards either the hand on the shin, or you could use your block and place your hand there. 
so both of the hips are open. This is an important piece. So we want to maintain openness through both hips. The left kneecap is turned up towards the sky. And we're reaching strongly through that right arm as we feel the energy flow across the chest, across the upper back. Now gradually I'm making my way with my right arm over my right ear. So you can stay with the arm up, option one. Ah, option two is to bring the arm all the way over. Now feel the connection between that standing knee and the right pinky finger. If you notice, the sides of the neck are long. You don't want to let your head fall down or let your ear come over and do that or look up. You're just lengthening through the two sides of the, of the neck. Meanwhile, ah, just enjoy the intensity of this for your... Ah, Breathing into the sensations. When you're ready to come out, let the right arm come up and come out with the arms once again, open out to the sides. Ah, let the palms turn up. Inhale, lift the arms overhead. Join the palms together and exhale slowly opening the crown gate. Imagine that, visualize that. Let the energy flow in through the crown gate and integrate at the heart. Breathing out, let the arms float down and let's do the other side. Using the block, bringing it to the other side. Making sure once again that your heel is in line with the standing knee. Letting your right thigh roll up so that the right knee faces up. The hips are open. Inhale, we're going to take the arms up. Just stay at shoulder level for a moment and then turn the palms and lift up even more and lengthen upward from the standing knee to the fingertips, extending to the sky. Feel your spine lengthening. Ah, feel the grounding through that right heel and the standing left knee. And then exhale, open the arms out with palms facing down. And here begin to reach with your right arm, lengthening your right rib cage over your right thigh. Use your block to stabilize your hand, or you can rest your hand on your shin if you prefer. Ah, let the left arm start to come up behind you. Notice that my chest stays open. I don't want to close my shoulder. I want to open my left shoulder back. Ah, the two sides of my neck are long. My left arm is making its way over, all the way. Breathing out. Breathing in and out. Just feeling the intensity of this. Riding the wave. Exhale. Each exhalation, you want to empty the lungs. One more. And let's make our way back out, lifting the left arm, letting it take us out, turning the palms up as you return. Inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Strong reach, and then gather the energy, let it enter through the crown gate, and let it anchor at your heart. Ah. Release and relax the arms down, and walk yourself back.
bringing yourself onto just onto your knees. So here we're going to go into standing. So coming into a squat or half squat, whatever is possible for you. So here's squat. Oh no. All right, we are continuing. So we're going to make our way from this squat to a half squat, just having both feet on the floor. And I'm going to step sideways here so you can see better. And I'm just going to sit in my hips and make my back like a tabletop. And here we're going to do some standing cats. So hands are on the thighs with fingers pointing in, elbows out. And staying down like this, sitting in my hips, I'm going to now press through my palms and open through my chest to look up. And as I exhale, I'm tucking my tailbone under and releasing my chin towards my chest. All the way out. I sit back into my hips, I press into my hands, inhale, and exhale. Let's do that twice more. Inhale, and exhale. One more time. Feel the work in the thighs. Inhale and exhale. Here, let your hands come down towards the earth and just fold forward. Ah, knees can be bent any amount. There's a sense of heaviness and of letting go through the shoulders. You can let your head dangle, shake it out a little bit, letting your neck be completely at ease, and at the same time feeling the rooting through the feet. Roll up slowly, pressing through the feet, and we're going to stack our spine back up. And come back to standing. Here you may like to make use of the chair. Or you can use a block. So it's, it's up to you what, if you want to make use of the chair. We're gonna s open our legs wide. You want to be about a foot and a half away from the chair so that when you come this way, you can lift the back leg and just rest your hand on the chair. That's the whole point here of this chair. Otherwise, if you're not wanting to use the chair, I like to use a block when I do this pose. This is called Half Circle Ardha Chandrasana. So I would lift up and balance like this. So up to you what you what you feel like you're able to do today. Oh Alright, let's do this. So we'll start with coming into wide legs. I'm sorry folks, I'm having uh, issues with apps and things that are, keep popping up. I hope it's not affecting the recording. So we're going to go into Trikonasana, Triangle Pose. So open your feet, your legs apart, about three, three feet, comfortable distance apart, and then pivoting from the right heel, opening the right toes out at 90 degrees. Close your left toes a little bit, about a 30 degree angle. 
both of the inner thighs are rolling out. We're going to inhale the arms up. We're going to begin with a, a short warrior two where we bend through the right knee, look over the length of the right arm, right out through the right fingers. Find your breath here and notice that as you sit down in this hip, the right knee goes over the right toes and there's a strong reach back through the left arm. From there, we're going to bend through the right knee. From the bent knee, go into just a straight leg and start to lean over your right thigh, letting your left hand come to your left ribs. Turn the ribs back, opening through the chest, and then lift through the arm. So these standing poses are more demanding and more heating so hopefully you can really feel the work through the breath and grow the energy this is our increasing our stamina our ability to be with the strong sensations and the emotions that come our way. So from this Trikonasana, we're going to bend the knee again, place our hand on the chair or on the block or floor, and take small steps with our left foot, and then stand up in that standing leg really strongly. Imagine the two legs gathering towards each other as you extend the energy out through the back foot. If you want, and it's available to you, you can let your left arm come up. Breathe. Feel your strength. Feel your power. And coming out, bend through that standing leg and find the floor. Come back into triangle and then lift out. Inhaling to stand. And then relax for a moment. Relax. Finding your way to the other side. So you can move your chair over to the left side or use your block and come back into the wide stance. Inhale, the arms up. So the arms are strong, the shoulders are relaxed. This time I pivot on my left heel, opening my left foot at 90 degrees, and closing my right toes, approximately to 30. Inhale here, feel that right hip drop as you bend through the left knee, and keep extending through the arms strongly. From here, left, Elbow, sorry, we're doing warrior two, <laughs> so we're looking over our left arm, and from there we're going to straighten that left leg, extend into Trikonasana, so letting the right arm lift up, the right rib cage are turned and rolled back. Creating more space through the chest and feeling the energy flowing strongly through that, from that back heel to the head, to the upper arm. Here, transitioning by bending through that front knee, putting your hand on the block, taking small steps until you feel that you can lift that back leg. Now there's a gathering quality between the thighs. There's an energy of coming together in towards midline. If it's available to you, you can lift your right arm up. Feel the energy flowing out through that back leg, connected to the standing foot. Slowly bring yourself back out. Then come up all the way and stay.
step your feet together. Ah, let's just rest here, letting our palms turn open to the front so that we may feel an openness through the heart. So we are coming to that time where it is time to lower ourselves to the floor. Just take a few more breaths, letting go of all the doing now and feeling the strong circulation of prana throughout the body, the warmth in the hips, the expansiveness in the chest. Mm, this beautiful light has been turned on. Okay, and then from there, let us return to the floor, finding your way onto your mat. Mm, whatever way feels right. And bringing your socks, your blankets, whatever you need to be warm. Finding your way into a comfortable laying down position on your back. So I look at the time, it's a little bit after 20 after, so we will likely go a little bit over to 2212. Uh, somewhere there between 252 or 22. So once you're on your back, notice if there's any need for support under your knees so that your back may feel more at ease. Hmm. See if you need anything under your head to give you more support for your neck. Cover yourself with a blanket and perhaps something over your eyes to block out the light to allow you to go a little more deeply into your inner, into the inner world that you're experiencing right now, that beautiful sense of being flooded with <clears throat> an energy that is reminding you of how vital and alive you are, and yet it is an energy that is calming and soothing to the nerves. Feel your whole nervous system starting to really rest, to unwind completely. And because of our <coughs> standing work, you are still aware of the beat of your heart, the pulsations <clears throat> of that heartbeat. Notice your arms and your shoulders heavy. Allow anything that you feel as though you are still holding to let go now, completely. Allow yourself to become completely empty. Completely empty. Just follow the, the breath coming in, coming out. Allow the whole face to soften.
feel as though um, your tongue is wide and heavy in the lower half of your mouth. Feel your eyeballs sinking. Your brain cooling in the base of your cranium. Feel your heart and your lungs resting into the cradle of the back body. Feel your pelvis and abdomen soft, heavy. Notice your breath. Rising and falling. Feel the entire lower body. The whole legs, the heels, let go even more. Feel as you let go that you are resting into a sea of gravity. Consciousness, your awareness is anchored deep inside your physical body. Feel how through the physical experience you're connected to something vast, bigger than the individual self. Allow yourself to rest there. <clears throat> that you are whole and complete just as you are. Notice that you are connected 
connected to something vast. the small self is held and cradled by the higher self, that limitless consciousness in which we abide. like to end today with the chant and some of you may know this chant I've shared it with you before the Purnam chant Feeling yourselves still anchored deep within this vastness. Just begin very, very slowly and gradually bring movement into whatever part of the body you feel called to. Maybe turning your head from side to side. Or wiggling your fingers or toes. And as the movement comes back, you notice the breath returns as well. Start to engage with the breath. And let your body move a little more, bending your knees and oh, moving your knees. 
knees from side to side or rocking on your back with your knees near your chest. And just take your time. Allowing your body to roll to one side and to rest there while you are just simply aware of being supported. The eyes are still closed. Another breath. And begin to return now, just moving back to seated position and placing a cushion or a blanket under your under your seat. And sitting nice and tall without any tension. The eyes are still closed. You're still really aware of the space that you've created, your internal space. And let your hands begin to rise. Just hold them up, suspended, just around the heart center, palms turned up. And for a moment, feel the beautiful vitality, aliveness in your palms. Feel in this gesture that you are open to experiencing and holding all within your awareness. There's something vast enough inside you to allow for that. Just to hold it in compassion. Hold yourself in compassion. Let your hands come back towards each other into Anjali, into the devotion mudra. Thumbs to the heart. And here let's complete with three arms. Inhaling from navel to heart. Upper corners of your mouth turn up. Let your head bow. Self honoring gesture here. Namaste. I look forward to joining you again next Sunday, same time, same place. And may this week find you more and more into that place of openness and leaning into the vastness that you are.